Is a pusher configuration always better, compared to a standard configuration? Is a perfectly smooth duct that came out of a mold always better, than a duct that was made with a 3D printer? You will find out by the end of this video. But first, let's start with the general idea. Inverting your setup from a standard, pull configuration, to a pusher configuration, means that you are flipping some parts of your multi-rudder upside down. The arms of the frame, will go at the top, the motors are upside down, and the propellers are at the bottom, but have the same orientation so that they still move air downwards. They are called pull and push configurations, because in a pull setup the propeller is in front of the load, and pulls it to the direction of movement, while in a pusher setup the propeller is behind the load, and pushes it to the direction of movement. You can also find push-pull configurations, where you have two propellers and motors at the top and bottom, that pull and push at the same time. But this deserves a video of its own. Removing obstructions such as the frame arms out of the way, would allow the air to flow more freely, and in a less turbulent manner, increasing performance. And this may be true, if we are talking about a setup with prop guards, useless straight wall ducts or nothing at all. Unless I guess, the motor is too wide in relation to the prop, and it obscures airflow over the high-pitched portion of the propeller, near the hub. But if we are talking about ducts that are properly designed, the answer is far from clear and straightforward. Actually, ducts are a lot more complicated than you may think they are. Every characteristic of a duct design is important, in one way or another. The shape and height of the inlet and the outlet. The distance between the tips of the propeller blades, and the wall of the duct. The surface of the wall itself. And of course the overall weight, can, and will, affect the performance you will be getting from your ducted multi-router. This is why sometimes the duct, motor, and propeller combination you choose for your build, or buy as a BNF, ends up hindering the performance of your setup, instead of improving it. Let's take the ducts of the diet and taken as an example. The design characteristics of this duct have produced very good results in my previous tests, you can find them linked below, if you haven't watched them already. So, if we convert the Taken to a pusher configuration, meaning that the motors are facing upside down, and there are no parts of the frame in the way, the performance will definitely become even better, is that right? Nope. Removing obstructions from the outlet of the duct may sound like a no-brainer improvement, but you may be changing the position of the propeller in relation to the height of the duct. This means a different gap between the tip of the blades, and the wall of the duct, and a different wall height above and below the prop line. It also means a significantly different behavior of the airflow. Even if you just change the motor size, and use motors with a smaller height, this will affect where the propeller sits inside the duct. So at the exact same RPM, you may be getting very different performance. In the beginning of the video I mentioned the smoothness of the duct. And this is what surprised me the most, because things did not go as I expected. My Taken, when it first launched, came with 3D printed ducts. Dietan later made ducts with the same design, but using a mold, to make the plastic ducts lighter, more durable and with a much smoother surface finish, compared to the 3D printed version. Visually the ducts look the same. Basic measurements also seem to confirm this. But, as far as I know, 3D printers are not great at making perfect circles. As a result, any tiny little difference in the diameter or shape of the 3D printed duct, can potentially alter the performance, compared to the seemingly identical molded duct. Enough with the theoretical stuff. Here is how this looks like on my thrust stand. The test rig is powered by a 1200 watt 50 amp adjustable PSU, connected to a completely custom DC to DC converter and data logger. Testing is done with an RC benchmark thrust stand, which controls the ESC, and measures all the valuable data. The ESC drives the motor, the propeller spins and my neighbors cry for mercy. The scene is illuminated by a spotlight and captured by a camera. For a more detailed introduction, you can check the video linked in the description below. Custom scripts are ran in the RC Benchmark PC software, sending automated and repeatable test sequences to the thrust stand. Depending on the model, the thrust stand logs data such as thrust, torque, power, RPM and vibrations, in real time. The DC converter also sends power data to the PC, displayed on a separate graph. Video and audio are combined with the other graphs using OBS. The motors I used are the Toka 1408 2900KV from Dieton. I ran them on 5S voltage with a Gemfin D76 5 bladed propellers. I performed my usual sets of tests, which include measuring the performance at a target thrust value, equivalent to hovering. At specific RPM values. 
at throttle levels of 25, 50, 75 and 100 percent. As well as during a continuous ramp from 0 up to 100 percent and back down to 0 percent. I ran multiple rounds of tests for each configuration, spanning over several days, switching back and forth between the push and pull setup and the molded and 3D printed ducts. What you will see in the test footage is just a fraction of the whole process. I think at this point I can plug my Patreon and ask for your support. These tests require a lot of work and dedication in order to get done right. You can become a patron, tip me via PayPal, or simply use any of my links in the video description before buying new goodies. Every little bit helps a lot. Even if you decide not to support my efforts, I hope you find the information in this video useful. Sharing it with others and hitting the like button also help a lot.